The Canadian government's playing with fire, and I don't even think they realize it, if I'm honest. You see, it really feels like the Liberals have forgotten that there's a fundamental underlying deal between the people and leadership. Whether that be the leadership of companies, or the leadership of the nation, whatever. There are fundamental underlying deals that are made along the way, and those need to be honored. Let me give you an example, and I'll make a little more sense. Think for just a second about mortgages. During the time that most mortgages became common, there was still a lot of social convention against usury, believing that lending money and charging interest is a bad thing. But somehow people got convinced to take on 25-year-plus debt in order to have somewhere to live. And that's because of the underlying systemic compromise. Governments agreed to regulate the housing market and create a mortgage market in order to make it more attainable for people to own a home. In exchange, people gave up some of their freedom because they got attached to a 25-year debt and it was a lot harder to walk away from your job or your family or whatever it may be if you've got a substantial investment in a physical place. Made it a lot harder for them to pull up stakes and leave for another country or province or whatever. The system made adaptations to meet the needs of the people and in exchange, the people made their own concessions. You got housing, you gave up some freedom. Now, values-wise, you can agree or disagree with that, but it's kind of how it played out. So if you've got a whole system that depends on that stability that long-term debt and homeownership gives, and then that long-term homeownership becomes unattainable, then what? What happens to the peace that we were able to usher in through the mortgage market and long-term housing? What happens if everyone becomes renters? The deal's been broken, and the consequences that are unclear. What happens to a society that doesn't feel any sense of ownership of the physical space around them? There are different societies that had different views around property, but they had different communal values that made that possible. But the fundamental point that I'm trying to make here is that these sort of deals are getting broken left, right, and center. Because the example I really want to talk about here is the rail strike. The federal government has functionally suspended the right to strike for these workers. They haven't legally done so, but the effect is that. I've talked about this in the past, but it's basically going to give the government the power to force workers into binding arbitration whenever they particularly want. And here's the issue with that. There's a fundamental underlying deal. Think about the history of organized labor. Didn't always used to be like this. There weren't even concepts like legal and illegal strikes. And centralized labor unions that are governed by different government acts. Those are new. Those laws and those structures, they were created to give labor peace. For a long time, labor organizing was way more militant and in many cases violent. Think of the Regina riots and the Manitoba General Strike and more. A lot of the labor rights that we have now were earned through blood. So what happens if those very same systems that were engineered to bring labor peace become just further systems of exploitation for employers? They become further ways to hold down the workers. When those systems no longer offer any real benefit to the workers, what reason is there for the workers to continue complying? If the system's just going to screw workers, why work within the system? They have the power here. They can withhold their labor. You can think the companies held all the power you like, but if the factories aren't running, they don't make money. And whether you declare it a legal strike or not, you can't compel them to work. And we've seen this come to fruition with the QP strike in 2022, led by labor legend Laura Walton, pictured here dressed as Rosie the Riveter because the strike began on Halloween. They were ordered back to work and mandated a contract, and they said, hell no. They went out on a legal strike and won because they recognized that the systems of compliance that had been put in place to minimize labor power weren't serving them. So they just went past them. And that's exactly what's going to happen. Because if governments continue to undermine labor power through structural authority, Labor's just going to start disregarding structural authority, and it's going to bring in a new labor of labor militancy that I don't think Canada's ready for. Canadian workers have been squeezed for generations, and they've had enough. Governments and employers are sowing the seeds of discontent and have been for years, and it's getting closer and closer to just blowing up in their faces.